live in the 405. We're not live, but we are back. We're live. No, we're not. We are back. And we're live. Weekly, not live. We're sort of live. Okay, to uh, everyone listening, or, well... The, well, the, the people who are listening. The few the that few. listen, here's the deal. <laughs> Speed Society is going to be hosting all of these podcasts. You're going to be seeing a ton from these guys. I, like, they're... Yeah. How big are they, Sean? Uh, it's the biggest automotive website in the world, and, I mean, they got a lot of cool shit. Yeah, we're stoked to be working with guys like that, for sure. Anytime we can align ourselves with other huge automotive people, this is perfect. So Also... Stop listening now and go and like it and comment on it. And the sooner you do that, hopefully the more podcast episodes you'll hear. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the Crow 405, Murder Nova, Midway Streetcars. Like it, comment on us. Tell us who you are. Tell us why you listen to it. Keep this going, please. There are people that are, don't want this to keep going. Yeah, there's going. people right now trying to make, trying to put an end to this. They, they so, don't want us on the air. And we got guys like Speed Society that want to help us keep it going. So Welcoming us. Let's do it. Rock and roll. Help everybody out. And while you're there, check it out. Their website's awesome. <clears throat> okay, we back. Here we are. We are. Chief and Sean Show. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. You know how Look, I know? I know because I know. How you know? How I know because I know. I know I know. I know I know. I know I know. Uh, I know I know I know. Um, yeah. So we we we've been screwing up. Yeah. Let's get it. Let's get it for real. We've been screwing this deal up. We haven't done the podcast like we're supposed to. Like in a while. Yeah, we felt like we were. I think you know we just felt like we were getting too big. We felt like we were getting too big for our britches. We had gone from tens of listeners to twenties and thirties of listeners, maybe, you know, maybe even a hundred listeners. And we had to cut it back a little bit. We had to, we had to, you know, we had to cut it back. We were getting a little too big. We had to check y'all. We had to check it. So now I'm sure we're back to tens of listeners. Yes. And the, but the people who are listening now, it's going to be our core group. Yes. It's going to be our core group. And you know, they'll forgive us, even though they don't want to forgive us. They'll forgive us. They'll, They'll get us. We'll be back in their good graces eventually. You know that's. It's gonna happen. They're the, they're the ride or die podcast people. Yeah, ride or die. Right. That's who we want. We yeah. want the ride or die stuff. So, here we are. Um, we got a lot to talk about. We do. Uh, before we talk about it, though, we're going broke. Um, these little trips and things that we've been taking, <laughs> they're costing us a lot of money. Yeah. We're. Let's face it. Not working. Let's face it. We're not working. Mm-mm. All we're doing is racing yes. and taking trips. So we're going broke. Help us out. Go online, midweststreetcars.com. Get some, get you a shirt, get a hat, get you a bracelet, koozie, keychain. Yeah. I got a bracelet. I got, I got, I wear a murder over bracelet every day. Mm-hmm. Sean wears a chrome mod bracelet every day. It's because we're besties. Yes. That's how besties roll. The trick thing that we have now is we actually have the Hot Wheels cars. We have the die, the small die cast scale. What, one sixty fourth? One sixty fourth scale cars. Like actual little cars. They're matchbox types cars. We got them. We have one of the Murder Nova. We have one of the Crow, the original Crow, the OG Crow. The packaging is amazing. It says on the front of them, looking at the Murder Nova one right now, it says Sean Ellingson's Murder Nova die cast metal body and chassis, limited edition. Um, this thing is, is, it's ridiculous. It looks just like the Murder Nova. There's no doubt about it. It is, it is the Murder Nova. Um, and it has a little deal on the back, tells about Sean, tells about where he grew up, how he got the car, what the car is, what motor, tranny, all that stuff. It's pretty, pretty legit little deal here, yeah. honestly. So those should be going up on the website today or tomorrow i think uh, i'm not sure it depends on when fanning there'll be new new stuff coming yeah. new stuff uh we just got them in stock so they're in the they're in the shop here up front if you want to come by and grab one if you're not local then uh we'll have them on the website i think um here in the next day or two anyway keep an eye out for that uh maybe by the time the podcast goes live i don't even know yeah they're pretty sweet though i don't even know man the crow looks Looks amazing. The crow looks just like legit. It. it looks like they're yeah, and it even says like the crow on it. it says twin turbo and on mm-hmm. on the hood. I mean, it's the it's the real deal, man. It's hard to look at. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's sad. It's sad because 
that car doesn't exist anymore. So you could get a piece of history. It exists in my mind. Yeah. I think on the next Murder Nova diecast car, that should be a button on top. And just like it's the, when you hit the button, it like shakes the tires. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that we should have that. I think I the mean, next. But it's built in to where even if you're rolling these around on the ground, it will shake as you roll. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once, once you move it like three or four yeah, inches, the, it starts shaking. You hit the button and that like starts the race, right? And yeah. then once you move it three or four inches, then all of a sudden the, it just starts <laughs> shaking yeah. the back. Doors of it. pop open and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Wouldn't that <laughs> then be? It would be legit. Then it would, that would be a legit ass car. That would be awesome. Um, so, those should be up pretty soon. I don't really know when, but soon. Um, Sean, what? Uh, there's a lot going there on. There is. There's there a is. lot. What are we going to talk about first? We went. I don't. I feel like we've we've missed every episode of the show, right? You know. I'm, I mean, since my crash, I've been kind of a hermit. Yeah. You know, since the show, the show has put the crash on. Well, they showed it 42 fucking times, though. You know, I mean, it was, it's brutal to watch. And, and not even just the episode that you crashed in, they tend to show it. I mean, they even showed it last night. So we just have to keep on reliving that moment. Yeah, it's like it's, that part of my life never going to go away. It's not. It's, it's sealed in, in history of television. And it sucks because every time I go out in public, everybody that watched the show believes that it just happened, you yes. know? Yes. So, because they just watched it, so it's still fresh in their mind. I'm trying to forget it, yes. right? And this happened November 14th of last year, Ooh. right? On my birthday. On Sean, I crashed my. See, that's how much. That's how much I hate Sean. I wanted to take the thunder from Sean so bad that I crashed my car on his birthday. Yeah. Just basically let everyone forget about Sean's birthday because it's the day that Chief crashed the crow. <laughs> yeah. So now, now we're gonna have to have a uh, birthday party and a going away party. <laughs> Every year, Sean can't be happy about his birthday because nope. this is the day that Chief crashed because the crow. Because then I can go, man, it's been a year. It's been a year <laughs> since we, you know, the crow left us. So, anyway. Um, yeah, I, I heard a lot this weekend, uh, House Chief, you know, and I'm like, well, you know, he's got a broke back. So, he still bitches about it all the time, you know. <laughs> but we still do donuts in the tr in, in my little truck on TV. What's What's great is the episode after you crash your car. You know, you're putting the belt back on after we throw the belt off the little truck and and I'm shaking you all over the place doing donuts in the car and you know <laughs> I mean life goes on, you know. You're just in a lot of pain now. Yeah, no, I mean it's the same. Yeah. I'm just in pain. I just have to get over that pain, you know. Can't yeah. be a bitch my whole life, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's only been about six months. So <laughs> you know. I'll let you slide on on a few things. Um so you went to Cots. I did. This is the uh, big street uh, street ish. Well, it's a no prep, right? Yes. It's a no prep race that goes on up near the Chicago area. It's called Cots, King of the Streets. Big going on forever and ever and ever. One of the original no preps. Mm -hmm. Um, you went to that deal. How was it? Cool. Um, yeah, I had a great time, man. It, obviously, it didn't work out so well for me. I I really thought I'd, you know, at least get down the track, you know. And yeah, you, you decided to go Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, but I couldn't start working on the car till Thursday. Yeah. But you decided yeah. to go Thursday and you had to change the car all up for small tire track race. Yes. Cause Wednesday night you street raced it. Wednesday night we got in about, I think I got to my house about five thirty in the morning from street racing on the show. <laughs> but it was and a, it was a good night. It was a, it was <laughs> a great night. I mean, we're not, we can't talk about it, we but can't it was talk a good about night. it, but murder Nova showed up and we did well. Yeah. So, um, I was, I was really happy. And then I'm thinking, wow, what am I going to do this weekend? You know, you, you're going to be gone. We get a weekend off from filming, and what do I decide to do? I decide to spend six hours swapping the car from big tire to small tire and then drive 14 hours to go race on my weekend off. <laughs> I mean, it kind of sounds dumb when you put it like that. <laughs> it, well, <laughs> you know. And then, and then I, I'm starting to think, you know, I've learned a lot from you over the years. And I'm starting to, to, to tune on my car a little bit myself. And of course it's not the greatest thing. After you helped me out on Wednesday night, you told me, please stay out of the computer. And uh, I can't really do that, man. I, I, I have to get in it myself. And it, at some point I've got to fuck it up to, so that I can learn, you know, and, 
And a lot of people was like, where's Chief? I wish he was here. I was like, you and me both, brother. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that after three passes, you could have got my car down the track. But there, God, I hope so. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole lot of stuff that uh, I didn't really consider. And leaving on eight pounds of boost on a 28.10.5 and a no prep is one of those that, that I didn't really consider. And I I commend you for trying. Well, that was a turn down for what situation really there. Wor- we were listening to a turn down for what. If and, it, well, that maybe that was your problem. You know, maybe you should have been listening to. Uh, it didn't work out. Maybe you, should, <laughs> maybe you should have been listening to something a little slower. Yeah, something called A to B or something. Something a little uh, three pounds for what. Well, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm here to tell you, that fucking car that I raced, he <laughs> just straight down the track. And I kept on thinking, well, if it hooks this time, I got him. You know, I'll, I'll come around him. And I, I thought that until we got, you know. Probably a little past the three thirty, and then I realized, look, it ain't gonna. Not happen. gonna have it. No, it, was it, it eighth mile? It never even tried to hook. Yeah, was, was it eighth mile? mile? It was eighth mile, and and we made a couple of passes the night before, and we smoked them out of the hole. I I pedaled it one time, and it stuck. It got out there. It picked the front end up. It carried the front tire, and I was like, okay, you know, we're we're getting somewhere, and we weren't really getting anywhere. Yeah, you know. But then the next day, it was like ninety six degrees. It was hot. I mean, it felt like we should have had the 55 out there. But how many people won that deal? I just won. And, and you know so, who won it. Take take a guess. You know who won. Uh, Silver Mustang? It was a Silver Mustang. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I may have called that one. And, and you know what? I man? may have called he that one. He wins them all. Yeah. I mean, he's won like three or four in a row, in a row now. No preps. And yeah, he's doing well. Him and Flacco are really doing well. And no Flacco prep. didn't make it. Yeah, but he he's been doing well in he no has. prep. He you has. know what I mean? So and and I had heard from somebody that, that he leaves on two pounds of boost and then he brings it in from there. Well, yeah. I probably should have thought about that. Yeah, or or just put the radial tune up in it like we talked about. Well the radial tune up still leaves on seven and a half. I don't think it's supposed to though. <laughs> and it does. And it uh you know, there's a big difference between that track we were on and a Was it a true no prep, you think? Um, once, once the sun came out, yes, I, when I first got there, when I first got there, I walked it and I was like, eh, you know, they claim this is a no prep. It felt pretty good to me, but you know me, I don't really know a good track whenever I feel it. I don't know. It felt better than what we're used to racing on. You know, it, it was, it was good enough that if I'd had the big tires on it, it would have shook my teeth out. Oh God. Well, that's anywhere. So, (laughs) but we had a good good time, man, you know, and, uh, I really didn't realize that it was Tufts track until you had told me, you know, you know, that's, that's Tufts track up there, you know, and who did we see as soon as we pulled in, we found a good little spot back in the back. And I thought, man, this is it. You know, it's far away from everything. You know, this is where we're going to park. And next thing I know, I'm walking the track and I hear murder Nova, come back to your vehicle, please. You know, so I walk over there and who's there tough. He's like, Hey man, we got your spot right up front. And I'm like, man, we're good. You know, it's, it's no big deal. And he's like, no, man, come up here. Perfect spot, you know. And I was like, is there enough room for boosted? And he was like, well, I, I don't know, man. It's 24 wide. And I was like, is, if there's enough room for me to pull forward, we can pit behind the trailers. And then if boosted could get next to me, then then I'll do it. I pulled up there. And what do you know, man? It was right next to him. Oh, nice. So, so you, were, you and Tuff were hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was hanging out over there. But. Man, I'll give it to him. I don't like the guy. He's a douchebag on the internet, but he he treated us good. I mean, he he brought us food all weekend, and you know, the the best thing that he did was man, he dropped it off and then left. That's that's good, right? So you know, I mean, I got to give him that. We felt welcomed. The track owner came over to me and and really thanked us for being there. You know, heyo, he was really cool. Which I like him. He's always cool, but. Yeah, a lot of those guys are cool. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of jerks in the Chicago Whoa. area. Yeah, they were jumping up and down whenever I got beat, for sure. Well, of course. I mean, so. I've, generally, I, I don't like Chicago, but there, there's a lot of fans up there. There's a lot of good people there, whatever, you yeah. know. So, eh, you know, take the, the good with the bad, as long as you had fun, right? And I, I had a good time, and the podcast listeners were, like, out of the woodworks up there. Like, I was amazed at how many people listen to the podcast from up there. It, uh, it sucked because, like, I was – I had a connecting flight in Chicago and I was in Chicago and um, something at the travel agency got fucked up and I didn't actually have a seat on the connecting flight. I had a boarding, oh, wow. I had a boarding pass. I thought that's what that meant. Wow. Boarding pass means you get a pass to board the plane. Yeah. That means you can get on. Yeah. But there doesn't mean you have a seat. 
So, so what'd you do? somehow or another, I got screwed out of my seat. And you know me, I was late. Oh, yeah. You know. Um, somehow I got screwed out of my seat. So I had a connecting flight that, but it was like a few hours in between. Well, <laughs> you know, I was dicking off, not paying attention. I was late. So by the yep. time I got yep. back, they took my seat, you know, and so I didn't have a seat. So I had to wait even longer on another one. So I was hanging out in Chicago for a while. Wow. And I just like started to realize, oh, hey, this is like Sean's heading here. Sean might be here already. Sean might be here soon. Sean will be here and race soon. I'm like, man, you know, like it was tough. I really wanted to like stay at least for one night of the testing, yeah. you know, and yeah. then like, then like shag ass to the NHRA that deal. That would have been really cool. I thought about it, man. I really did. But then the next flight, they were like, okay, we got you on the next flight. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll go. So I had to, I had to roll. I had to go to um, English town, New Jersey, which I've never been to. I haven't either. Never been to New Jersey. How was it? Um, well, you know, it's New Jersey. I don't know if you know much about New I don't, Jersey. I don't. Well, I know there's a bunch of Yankees up there. I didn't feel, um, I wasn't feeling it really. Yeah. When I got off the plane, you start to realize that everyone up there hates you for being a human and for breathing air. And, um, getting in their space and you're, you're in their way, you're in their space and you're not paying near enough attention to what's going on and you don't know where you're going and it's your fucking fault. You prick son of a bitch. Like that's the way, that's, that's the way I felt. And, uh, so I get out of the airport, finally get through security, which was, I mean, you know, just there shouldn't be security to get off the airplane. You know what I mean? But I felt like there was, well, there was plenty <laughs> of security when you got on it. Yeah. Unless you made a bomb up in the air or something. Let's not say bomb. Uh, it's not, it's not a bad word. Yeah, you got. Well, I got to get on one eventually. They're gonna. They know. <laughs> I feel like they know you. You know. They don't know me. So anyway, I got off the plane. Got finally got to my rental car, which felt like, you know, what kind I of do, car was it? It was a uh, Chevy. Fuck out! It was a pile of shit. It was. Um, it was a. Uh, it's like the bigger. It's like the intermediate. It was like a Chevy <laughs> intermediate. It was a full size. <laughs> That wasn't quite a full size. Um, like a Malibu or something? Yeah, something like that. It was a cruise or a, you know, a fucking Volt or something. Or I don't yeah, know. It was a yeah. fucking. Did it take gas or fucking, did you plug it in? Oh, I don't know. I didn't fucking put any gas in it. You know me. I dropped that bitch off on E on fumes. Yeah. Uh, so the coolest thing was, though, it's like I didn't realize that they hate everyone up there. So I come out of the airport in the rental car. Of course, I'm looking at my phone trying to figure out where I'm going. I'm going to go to the track. So I'm like looking at my phone, trying to figure out where the track is. And of course you can't just put in drag strip or whatever. It's got to be some crazy weird name for that track up there. So it's not like, I just know the track is English town. Yeah, that's know. not the name of it. No, it's like old bridge township raceway park in English town, wow. New Jersey, you know, and there's just a lot of tradition up there, you know? So it was weird. Cause the whole reason I'm up there is the NHRA contacted me and you know, we've been going back and forth. We haven't been too friendly with each other. To to put it, you know, very nicely, you know, they they blocked me on Facebook. They defriended me, blocked me, and then um, we haven't really been able to get along. Well, something has changed. They've gotten some different management. They've they've um, maybe seen the light a little bit. I don't know, but they want. They want to, uh, they want to fix it. So they called and said, Hey, you know, what can we do to get you out here? Get you to come check us out and, and let's see if we can make up. So we're in couples counseling, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out our, our problems. Um, by doing that, they're going to give me my NHRA license. They're going to let me be in their little club, give me my license mm -hmm. and let me be a part of it. Well, in order to do that, I had to go to a race and <laughs> basically announce that we're friends. We're Facebook friends again. And we're working on it, you know, and we're going to see what happens. And, uh, it was, you know, it was about like I thought it was going to be, but it was a good time. That track is a lot of tradition involved. There's a lot of history there. You know, the people and the fans, dude, they've never seen, I have never seen that many little kids at a race. Really? So many little kids. That's cool. The NHRA has a new thing that they're doing now too. That's 12 and unders free which is the first time they've been doing this. And I think, I don't know if it was because of that or if it was just because of New Jersey. Cause dude, those people up there 
have a real rooted history of drag racing. Like it's an old school thing. You know what I mean? Old timer drag racer people, you know, and, and they all, they all talk crazier than hell. And, but like on the way over there to the track, man, it's like you, you pull up to a red light and you're looking at your phone. And I mean, dude, instantly, as soon as the light goes green, if you're not burning the fucking tires off, they will rear end your fucking ass. <laughs> They're honking the horn. I, I mean, they shook their fist at me so much. There was so much fist shaking going on. The whole fucking state's got to have like tennis elbow, <laughs> like non stop. So first I'm just like, God, this is just terribly unpleasant. Like these people are pricks, man. I can't even figure out where I'm supposed to be going without them honking the horn and yelling at me. And they're real quick to yell out the window, you know, that you're a cocksucker. Like, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, geez, like that's f just because I'm you like, you need a I'm, kamikaze with you so like, you can shake his fist at everybody. I'm like new, you know yeah. what I mean? Like they didn't care. Though. No. And you can't turn left huh? ever you for any reason, for any reason ever. Do you turn left? Really? No. You gotta make it's a bunch a of strict rights? three rights to make a left. It's very strict. It's very strict. They have turnabouts. So like instead of going left, you can take you can go off to the right and it will take you around to where you can go that way that kind of takes yeah. you left. Not allowed to make a left-hand turn. You know, me, yeah. I pull right in the fucking media with my blinker on, look trying to go left and they're fucking dude. <laughs> they was mad. Huh? They were ready to get out and drag me over to where I need to be. Uh but so I was I was really feeling unwelcome. I was like, this is going to suck, man. If this whole weekend is like this. Everybody's going to hate me, you know. They just hate the fuck out of everything here. Yeah. But then we came to the next red light. And the guy beside me, he wasn't paying attention. And, oh, buddy. They give it to him? Let him have it. Oh, they, that's got to make you feel better. They let him have it. I said, oh, okay. At least so it wasn't just you. It's not just fuck me, right? Yeah. It's fuck everybody time. So then I get kind of I get kind of involved. You Did know you what honk? I mean? I, I've never used a horn so vicariously in my whole life. I mean, I... <laughs> I was laughing my, I'm dude, I'm pulling, I try to get behind the people I think aren't going to be paying attention to, you know, like, <laughs> it's like, like a game. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. like, it's like all these people had such a bad day that they're going to use this time to take it out on their fellow man. So, so I'm like rolling down the road. And I look over and I see like a, you know, 17, 18 year old girl. And I'm like, Oh yeah, she's going to be on her phone, texting, putting on makeup. She's not paying attention. I'm gonna get behind her. Cause when the right light goes green, she's not gonna have a fucking clue. I'm gonna be able to honk shake my fist at her you know what yeah. I mean? and sure enough man i get to do that so it was a uh, 30 40 minutes driving of that all the way to the to the track and man i was in a good mood by the time i got to the track <laughs> i was like this is fucking cool right yeah, here you just so gotta be the same as them yeah it's just you know they're just they're they're tired of people not paying attention and they're gonna you know socially um berate you by honking their horns yeah. at you and let yeah. everyone know that hey it's this guy yeah it's not me it's this guy in front I can't of me go because yeah. of this guy yeah. and i'm paying attention this guy here's not he's a <laughs> fucking asshole. idiot yeah <laughs> and uh i i mean i just it was it was a strange drive to the track but once you get used to it once you get involved next thing you know you're just like them doing 90 mile an hour right through the middle of a neighborhood you know yeah. honking at everybody and acting like a fool shaking your fist at people there's cabs everywhere oh, that's the, what i that's what i picture the the cabs are, have changed it's more of this uber thing now uber yeah, is everywhere right yeah. and they look like regular cars they, yeah so. and they blend right in like undercover cabs yeah you know like like johnny depp yeah but there's always somebody in the shoot. back seat you yeah. know and nobody in the front yeah and, and but these people in the back seat are going ah! <laughs> yeah. these people can drive so well i'm not even shitting you there was a 60 year old woman that i was behind for about three miles and i'm trying to keep up as she's honking and shaking her fist and whipping and dipping in and out of traffic. She's shooting a gap on them, flicking cigarettes out the window. Like <laughs> I'd put this bitch in the crow mod right now and let her make a hit. <laughs> Guaranteed, she can drive better than half of our fucking list. There's no fucking doubt about it. This 60-year-old woman could outdrive half of our list. No problem. And she's in like a, you know, whatever the fuck kind of car that was, a Peugeot or whatever, I don't know, some kind of little gas getter car, some <laughs> smart car thing, but... She had a sucker tuned up and getting it. Just <laughs> never let off. It was amazing. The whole way to the track, I'm thinking, God dang, these people can drive out here, yeah. you know? <laughs> but uh beautiful country too. I had no idea. I mean, trees everywhere and you know, green and it was it was it was actually really pretty in New Jersey. I expected <laughs> something different. I don't know what I expected. I expected yeah. it different. I would expect more concrete than than green. Yeah, no, not not in New Jersey. Really? No, New Jersey's like um it's like really 
It's actually like really nice place. Nice little Don't place. Don't they there. have that? What is that like? Uh, like bo- that big boardwalk or whatever that they got in New Jersey, like the oldest one fucking ever or some shit. Don't they got like a big? Let's ask our producer Phantom. Black X Six. I mean, they Phantom. call it something. Why does it look like a panda? <laughs> I don't know what they call it. Fuck, I, don't know. I didn't get to see none of it. You didn't. You I, went airport, I went from airport. I went from airport to racetrack to hotel to air uh, was to your, racetrack. Was your hotel pretty close to the. No, nah, it was track? like no, it was like thirty five, forty minutes to the Ooh. track. Yeah. yeah, but that could have been pretty close. Yeah, no, I mean, it could have been. I don't really know. Yeah. To me, it wasn't very close. <laughs> it was a nice place. The airport? No. <laughs> no, no, no. The track? No. The motel? The hotel? Eh, it was all right. It was a Hilton. Mm. You know? It wasn't bad. You know me. I didn't spend a lot of time there. Yeah. <laughs> there was places to be. Yep. There was things to do. There was vodka to drink. You yeah. Know? So, party to have. Um, Did you get vodka, like, in the convenience stores and stuff? Because you could where we were. I don't know. Wisconsin, we walked into the convenience store, convenience and they're just, boom, right there. I didn't go to a convenience store. Well, I had to stop and get ice and things like that, and Phantom went ahead and picked up some vodka well, while we yeah. was there. No, uh, but you can at the track. Yeah? Yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. You could well, at our track. Well, there's a bar at the Patron tent at the um, at the Alexis DeJoria's pit yeah, area. Yeah, what's, what's the, the crew chief over there? What's his Tommy. Name? Tommy. Hey, he, Tommy, Tommy made me some last time we were there. Tommy's a party. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy hey, parties. Tommy parties. He, he Tommy, messaged me just here a while back, Tommy and I, I ain't got back to him yet. He's like, hey, I hadn't heard from you in a while. What's happening? No, Tommy party. I didn't recognize him, though, that his crew, tr- crew shirt on. When he yeah. first came up and started talking to me, I thought it was just some regular dipshit, you know? Yeah. And I felt like a real fucking asshole because I was, like, just kind of blowing him off. Yeah. And then, like, 10 minutes later, he's still there. And I'm like, God damn, this guy's never going away. You know what I mean? Like, who the fuck? And then all of a sudden. Do you have his little glasses on? He did. He oh, did. We, and you didn't recognize him? No. I think I feel like I'd recognize him just because of his glasses. Yeah, you know, maybe. I don't know. But no. I didn't. No. But then after a little bit, I went, oh, fuck. That's Tommy. I was like, that's God dang. Because I'm thinking, where's our crew chief? You know, that thing. I was like, holy shit, it's him right here next to me. So I was like, I, told, I even told him. I was like, fuck, man. I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you without your shirt. And he goes, you just thought I was some normal fucking asshole, didn't you? And I was like, <laughs> yep. And he's like, motherfucker. So. All right. So, I mean, I got to ask. We haven't had a chance to talk at all, so I don't really know how your weekend went. You know, we haven't talked about anything yet. This is the first time we've talked. Did you hang out with Jesse James? No. No? No, I didn't. Why not? Man, Um, I was on a mission, and my mission was to uh, see and do all the things that I need to do to drag race for the rest of my life. And he did not fit that mission. So it was, I was pulled so, I was stretched out so thin. You could have played guitar with me. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I mean, the NHRA had me all over the place. Now it was cool. You know, I got to do really neat things that normal people don't get to do, especially from my background. But I was really stretched thin, really thin, you know, going, I was all over the place, man. I was everywhere you could be. I was 50 places at once. So I didn't, and you know, Jesse James, he uh, he keeps himself busy on the car. He actually works on. He's actually on the car. You know, yeah, I mean? he's not just yeah. like hanging out. He's actually, he's actually thrashing on the car. Well, he's probably got to. You know, he otherwise w- he's just going to be hanging out with a bunch of people. Yeah, like me that want to hang out with. Yeah. Him. yeah. So no, he he kept himself pretty busy, and they kept themselves pretty scarce. Really, you know, they they were race car, and then they were gone. You know, so um, but. I party with Tommy a little bit, Nikki, the crew chief from uh, DHL, you know, and um, um, Del Worsham let me look at some top fuel data. That was cool. cool you know what I mean? Uh, I got assigned to Leah Pritchett's uh, top fuel team by the NHRA, so I was uh, I was kind of kicking it with them mm-hmm. all weekend, which was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I got to go up in the tow vehicle into the starting line, do that whole deal, work on the car a little bit, mix up some fuel, stuff like that. You know, got the whole, I got, I got the whole experience. I really did. And then, um, I, I got to kick it a little bit with Elite Motorsports, you know, the Oklahoma crew. Got oh, to yeah. kick it with them a little bit and, uh, kind of check out their operation. Of course, Rick Jones, RJ, the man. He, uh, so super awesome. I mean, just, yeah, yeah just he's cool dude. Just ready to just, you know, hang out i mean he's cool as hell i really like him and, and erica both erica was really you know um hospitable you know the whole place it, was, it made me feel welcome you know in some of those pits there's a lot of pits that i definitely wasn't welcome i did find that out too yeah well we knew that 
A lot of people out there don't want me there. That's, you know, a lot of people there don't like me. Yeah. Believe well, it or not. Fuck them. Yeah, no shit, right? Fuck them. Uh, so Friday and Saturday was spent doing TV, TV stuff for NHRA and going around checking stuff out. You know, I got to, um, meet a bunch of people and shake hands and, and do the picture thing and all that. And, you know, got to, got to hang out with some really cool people. Um, Chad head from, um, head racing. He has the funny car. He was super, super cool too. You know, just down to show you whatever. I mean, he's one of the guys he's like, he's like, we are, you know, like it, it, it's, it's weird. His no secrets. Yeah. You know, like his, uh, his little, his operation over there is just like, whatever, you know what I mean? Like we showed, I showed up over there and he's going to show me. So he's like, Hey man, you want to fire it up? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, it, fuck, fuck yeah, yeah man. Fire that mother. So he's like, all right, cool. So he fucking, he did too. He fired that motherfucker up right there. Just like, nice. I don't even know if you can do that. Like that's like uh you know, yeah, but you know, Hey, it's, it's his name on the side of the car, right? Chad head. You know I mean? He does what the fuck he wants, I guess. It sounded so, like um, he was cool. He showed me a lot about, you know, top fuel stuff and kind of gave me the rundown. Some of the stuff that they do is different than other people. It was pretty neat. Pretty, pretty, pretty neat for sure. Um, spent a little time in the pro stock pit, spent a little time in the top fuel pits. Um, got to learn a little bit about it. I'll tell you what, man, the top fuel cars, you know, they're the fastest accelerating automobile in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. The energy from them, it's amazing. It's just out of control. To 60 foot, they don't look that fast. To 150 foot, they don't look that fast. But motherfucker, when they hit the 330 cone, those bitches check out. <laughs> well, they're pretty fast in all those areas. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, you know, they go 850 to the 60 foot. You know, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, you know I mean, is. that's cool. But that's not, I mean, that's not that much faster than like a pro mod. You know what I mean? Some pro mods go eights to the 60 foot. They go 880. You know, Frankie Taylor's been 880 or some shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's not that. I mean, it's not crazy when there's cars with doors that do that. But hey, hey, then they hit, when they get that three, 330 cone and that motherfucker goes one to one or whatever the fuck you want to call it, checked out. See ya. I mean, I'm looking at data that shows these cars going over five G's to the finish line. Their G meter looks like, uh, looks like a, a mountain the other way of ours. Does it, does it? at all yeah yeah no it does a little bit it does it does a little bit you can see a little bit at the first how it dips a little bit at the first you know when they're pulling the timing out trying to keep it hooked up but then once the clutch comes in and it goes one to one i call it one to one you know when the clutch is when the clutch is there when that yeah. sucker stops yeah. slipping dude the g meter just checks out with the car and it's just 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 gone it's just like hello see you later bye-bye damn and uh it's fucking wicked but there's not a whole lot of um gripping wood grain going on yeah you know what I mean? There's not a whole lot of Grant gripping. There's not a whole lot of uh of of uh, whipping the wheel like there. No, no, it's a. Uh, I don't. I don't think they can turn it. You know, like they say that the whole the the as the power comes in, the more power it comes in, they just have to keep turning to the left, turning to the left, turning to the left. So like Chad Head said, by the end of the run, his steering was all the way as far over to the left as it can go. No shit. Mm hmm. Huh. Because he says trying to. You know, it's trying to drive the car. Yeah. The other way. So I was like, whoa, you know, that's kind of weird. And he said, yeah, the whole time you're just, as you go, you just keep going, keep going, keep going. I was like, whoa, like that's, that's kind of a lot. And what happens when you let off? Or maybe it's to the right. It may be to the right. I would imagine it tries to go. Yeah, it tries to, to go left. left. So maybe yeah. the steering wheel, the turn of the steering wheel. Yeah, maybe it's to the right. I don't really remember. I was standing so outside the car. So when you lift, you got to straighten it? Yeah, well, yeah, you got to drive into the chutes and Ooh. hope to God it keeps it straight, you know. But they're like 90 foot long, so I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, those were cool. Uh, the pro stock cars, um, the driving that, that's in those is, is hit the shift points, hit the light, hit the shift points, hit the light, hit the shift points, you know. Yeah. And, and I'm just, I'm not quite understanding a lot of the pro stock thing because, you know, right now they got the fuel injection. They just changed the fuel injection. So mm -hmm. they, they're all, all like lost, you know, everybody's just lost in this fuel injection thing. And of course, Not everybody, well, no, it doesn't seem like there's a couple of them that got figured out for sure. Yeah. Um, but being lost in the fuel injection thing is weird to me because, you know, I'm standing there like just, that's what we do. You know what I mean? Like, that's what we do. I'm thinking when I see a pro stock car, I'm thinking, oh man, I can't wait. 
I just want to hear what these guys say now. Oh man, now that we got fuel injection, we can do this. Now that we got fuel injection, we can do this. You know, and how how much happier they're going to be. With and they're bitching about it. Holy crap, they're bitching about nonstop fucking fuel injection piece of shit. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, wow, that's weird. You know, which doesn't make any sense to me because literally, there's Steve Petty. Steve Petty is like a couple hundred foot from these guys. Yeah, who can tune anything? Who is the fucking EFI? You know, man of men, right? Mm-hmm. He actually exists. And he's just down the road. He's at the race, and he likes money. So I mean, like, I don't, I don't understand how you could have all these problems. But hey, I stayed out of it. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't have a dog in any of those. Yeah, you, you didn't offer up his help to anybody. (laughs) Nah, (laughs) I didn't really offer up help to anyone because I didn't want to fuck anything up. But yeah, and of course, you know, as the weekend goes on, I start to get more and more me. Mm-hmm, and yeah. less and less well of, it doesn't take long i start to get less and less of what they want me to be yeah well you start getting a little comfortable and then your true self starts coming out so eventually i just checked out yeah i just like all right i'm not going up there anymore with them i'm not hanging out in their pit i'm not gonna hang out in their pit i'm not gonna hang out in their pit like i'm not even gonna like answer my phone or let y'all find me like i'm gone and uh, i ended up in troy coughlin's pit in the in the pro mod yeah, which is where you want to be you know i mean <laughs> Let's be honest. It's where I want to be. Yeah. So I did I did two or three days of their thing and, and it was cool and I did it and I loved it and it was a good time. Yeah, thanks. You know? But it's, I'm gonna go find my shit, right? I'm gonna go beat me for the bus. So yeah. I put on a yellow shirt. Mind you, I look good in yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm I saw gonna throw that. that out there. I saw a few pictures. It was look, really yellow. It was it was it was, it was a lot of yellow it, too. It is. It's a lot of That's yellow. That's a yellow little situation there. <laughs> yeah. But uh I got to go up to the line with them, and they won uh, first round, and, um, you know. Yeah, against, you know, Ricky Smith, right? No, that was second round. Oh, that was second um, round. First okay. round was Friday, or Saturday. First round was Saturday. I forget who they raced first round, but we won that one, too. And then, then we went against Ricky Smith first thing in the morning, Saturday, Sunday, and and then it just got harder from there, you know what I mean? More, more and more races and more and more winning, and, dude, they let me work on the car, and I'm I'm underneath it and I'm working on it. I fucking lost a goddamn valve cover nut. I mean, first fucking time I touched the car with a tool, he hands me the damn gun. I'm pulling the valve cover nuts off. He's like, yeah, you won't be able to get to that one because the turbo's okay. Take a wrench. I'm pulling it off there and dropped it right in the header. <laughs> Just, I mean, instantly. And this is like the, the round where they were like needing, they actually like wanted a little help because they only had like 40 minutes in between rounds. <laughs> So here I am. Oh yeah, I'm gonna jump in and help, and I'm gonna lose something. Not only am I lose it, I'm gonna lose it in the header. So yeah. great, good so, job. So how'd y'all get that nail out? Did you um, uh, like get a magnet or something? Start trying to fish it out dude, or what? I really debated on just taking off my yellow shirt and running and just <laughs> yeah. and just, just, just just don't even look back. Just be like, eh, you know that deal. That eh, deal didn't work out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. No, nah, they, you know, they, they made fun of me a little bit. And then, uh, my, the crew guys there, they helped me, helped me get it fixed and get it, get it back together. So, uh, but hey, they weren't, they weren't shy about letting me try it the second time that I lost it. Yeah. I mean, I lost it the second time too, you know, but it didn't go down in the head. Thank God it didn't go in the header though, <laughs> but I couldn't find it on the ground. And one of the other crew guys found it. So you had there. everybody there. Not only did you keep them from doing the, their, their job, but no, I you made had it them all looking. I made it for, difficult. For the nut. I really made the whole situation more difficult, but they didn't want me to leave because they were winning. (laughs) You know, they were like, nope, you have to do the same thing every time you're going to the line, you're riding in the golf cart, you're going to the finish line. That's cool. You're, you're with us. And, uh, so it was cool. It was really cool, man. And they won. And right before the final, I was like, uh, I walked up to them and I'm like, so after we win this deal, I mean, what's the celebration routine? Can I jump up and down, act like an idiot? And they were like, they were like, yeah, because you need to know. No, I need to know. I don't want to be the only guy jumping. You can't be the only guy jumping up and down, yelling in your face. Yeah, you suck. (laughs) You know, (laughs) you suck. And we get Billy Glidden in the finals. So it's a big deal here. What what was Billy driving? He's driving a turbo car. He was driving. He was driving Precision's turbo car. Man, we go to the finals. Finals with you guys. Yeah, he he went like an eighty-seven last round. We went like an eighty-five. I mean, it was (laughs) we were there, and you know, Billy can drive. He's a tree and everything. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, it was uh it was it was iffy. It really was. It was iffy. We, in it your was, face, Billy. Yeah, is I wanted to be like said? fucking took the p- <laughs> feathers right off that parrot, bitch, you know. So yeah. I wanted to yeah, but I didn't know how to I didn't know how, how far we were allowed to take it because yeah. we're so in that's, HRA. That's where we're going to draw the line. Yeah, so <laughs> so uh 
Steve and Troy are like, hey, man, you know, do whatever you do. I was like, well, I'm good because, like, I get paid to jump up and down and act like an idiot. You know, that's how I make a living. So yeah. I'm pretty good at it. So uh, I was like, well, that's what I'm going to do. And so I did. You know, I did. I jumped up and down and looked like an idiot. I heard the announcer say, Chief likes it. Petty likes it. You know, and I was like, hey, cool. That's cool. You know, yeah. so. Um, But it wasn't because I wanted to see him crush Billy or anything. It was just because they won. Yeah, you know I mean, they won the race. Yeah, it was cool. It's you know? not like you just did it because Billy was over there. No, I, I did it every round. Billy's cool, dude. <laughs> Uh, no, Billy and his wife were super cool. Yes. Billy, you know, Billy yelled at me in, all weekend and was rude, but, he, but, but in his, in his friendly way of yes, being Billy. His weird. Yeah. And his wife, way. though, his wife was super cool. You know, I tried to go up and say hi and she was like, give me a hug. You know, they were, they were super cool people. Yeah, so yeah. I was really, I was really welcomed in the ProMod area. You know, I, mean, I really was like Danny Rowe. Like he was at home. I was. I felt like I was at home. Yeah. You know, Danny Rowe, super cool. Even Steve Matusik, who I've heard doesn't like me at all, who owns Aeromotive. Yeah. I've heard doesn't like me, really? right? But was super. Why, cool. why would he not like you? Because of the whole NHRA tiff. So, you remember when we had that little tiff? I remember. It's, it's so that, you know. Why but you that's behind you guys. Now. It's behind us. We're Facebook yeah. friends. Yeah, exactly. So uh, no, he was super cool. Um, the the whole you know Vaughn Smith super cool. I mean all the all the top Promont guys were just as cool as they could be. Um, Michael Beely, that guy. I mean super super cool yeah. dude cowboy i'm 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 nicknamed him the cowboy i don't know if he has a nickname or not but i nicknamed him the cowboy yeah yeah is he a cowboy i don't know if he's an actual cowboy like in real life or anything yeah not like rides a horse no, i don't know if he like ropes stuff. i don't know if he like rope stuff yeah. or like wears spurs yeah. or anything but but he is he is a cowboy because him and his crew it's it's his shit you know what I mean? And sure. like, like, the, like he said, his car's sweet too. His though. car's, yo, oh, dude. I like it. Lack of sponsor stickers everywhere. That's awesome. You know, I mean, it's a good looking car, beautiful looking Mustang. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and his pit, it's all his shit. You know what I mean? And he kind of calls the shots. And, and whenever they were, they were, some of the other pro mod drivers were kind of bitching about him driving and they were like, he pushes it to, too far. And, you know, <laughs> he needs to chill out a little bit. And you know what? Hey, it's it. if he if like he said he even said it right there in front of me he says if i want to wad my shit up i'll wad my it's my shit and i was like get boy hell yeah there's your cowboy right here you know and that that whole pit area is full of cowboys you know what i mean <laughs> like because they're all rich they all they, i mean and you know whose car it is because their name's on the side yeah. you know it's not like the napa car driven by such and such you know it's like the beely car driven by michael beely yeah you know? this is him this, this the is guy. the jegs car driven Owner, by driver <laughs> operator driven by you know jegs you know what i mean exactly. like, like exactly. troy coughlin from jeg you know jeg coughlin troy coughlin like it's a team like these people are uh they're serious you know what i mean they're it's a, it's cowboy central over there and they hate each other they talk shit to each other they fight all the time they yell and scream like. Did they? Did they pit right next to each other though? They have to. Yeah. Which is I mean, weird. I they did. They share tuners. Oh yeah. No, everything is like everything is like. Uh, oh, they don't share tuners when we're racing. Really? There is no sharing of anything when they're racing. Tell you what, right now. Jags owns that deal, huh? Everybody has their own guys, and no one uses their guys. I thought that Petty tuned for nope. both of them. Nope. Petty tunes Jags cars. Jamie and, Jamie and Miller. Less, oh, okay. Jamie okay. Miller tunes Beely car. Okay. And hey, they don't really. There's no really interchanging going on really? there. No, it's race days. Race days, man. Wow. So Miller don't come over and talk to no. So to anything, Petty and be like, nope, Look. nope. Anything that Miller has has achieved in that pit over there, because I kind of thought it was the same way. Anything that that Michael Beely has achieved or Jamie Miller has achieved in that pit over there, they've it's done all it. Them, huh? It's all them, man. I That's mean, cool. Because they are. Uh, you know, it's a it's a different setup. It's not like I thought where everybody's just buddies and all the turbo guys like each other, you know. No, 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 no. No, it's not it's not like that. It's like get it yourself. Hopefully wow. you do good and not don't come over here, you know. It's uh it's different, man. Yeah, I mean, it's like that. They're friendly, don't get me wrong, but no, it's not these guys are are racing each other and it it means something. And they're cowboys, like I said, like Dude, the, the tuners are going at it. The, the crew chiefs are going at it. And the, you, everybody knows if this next guy's going to hang you out. Like we were racing one guy where they were like, Petty's like, all right, this mother, this motherfucker, he's going to hang us out. You can guarantee it. Every time we race him, you guarantee it. We go, I guarantee seven seconds. Guarantee, guarantee it. And I, he's like, so we got to get the training super cooled off. Don't start it till we get up there. Do a burnout quick. You know, like what, yeah. let him start. And I'm like, 
is it that bad? You know, it's really that bad. And the whole time they're looking over at the guy like they know he's fixing to do it. You <laughs> just know what I mean? Fucking it's like they like, know, like we know you're going to fuck us. We know it. We know you're going to fuck us, you know? And so, and that's why you get into those staging duels and, you know, they just fuck with each other, man. They really do. They're fucking cowboys. So was it seven seconds? Well, Troy, uh, Troy kind of, Troy drove it and, uh, he wasn't going in first. Oh, they no, put so some extra, there. They put some extra fuel in the car, got it real cooled off, and uh, he wasn't gonna let him do it. Wow, that's so awesome! He just, so he that just sat like there. a staging battle. Yep, and thankfully Troy's uh, smart enough as a driver, or or at some time has learned, or I don't know if he got lucky or what, but like you can hear the blower cars. So when they're doing their burnout and they're idling and stuff, they're at like twenty percent of the fuel system. So you can hear them as soon as they turn on the stage beam. Then the other guy turns on the stage beam. Then they roll the fuel pumps on 100%, and you can hear them like the top fuel cars. So the blower cars will sit there and clack, 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 clack. Well, as soon as they, both pre-stage beams go on, they turn the fuel on. They turn the rest of the fuel pump on, and it, and it starts bubbling, in, and it's like yeah, race car. So they're sitting in the pre-stage beams, both of them, and they're just sitting there. And well, then all of a sudden... The car, the blower car, you, you hear it bubble, start bubbling. And Troy knew that means he's got to go in. So he started doing that. So Troy starts spooling it up. He was so, running out of fuel or what? No, the, the blower car just had got to oh, the point they where just turned it on. they got to the point where they couldn't sit there any longer. Yeah. So they had to go in. In order to go in, they got to turn the fuel on. So they turned the fuel on and Troy heard the motor come down over there. Well, he starts spooling it. So then by the time the blower car goes in, he's ready to bump, bump, bump. And he's in. I mean, dude. It was a Worked out perfect. Huh? It was a really good, really good uh, staging situation well, cool, there. Man. It was it, cool. It's cool to see somebody like him, who you know he could just bring his fucking helmet, get in the car, and that's it. You know, at least he's aware of what's going on while he's inside the car. Oh, dude, there was a couple times I wasn't sure, but, well, <laughs> but that I mean, time I was. Who would be? Dude, who that would one be? pass I saw him. I mean, he went across the finish line sideways, completely sideways, smoking the tires. That's cool, and, man. Hey, and when we got down there to him, and he got out of the car. He was jacked up, dude. He was jacked up. That's and he cool. was pumped. I was like, man, it's cool to see guys like him still excited. Exactly. You know, a run like that still pumps him up. That's cool, man. Because you figure, man, man he put his fucking helmet down, go get in the fucking air conditioner. Yeah, I didn't even think he'd be there by the time we got down there yeah. to get the car. I yeah. figured he'd have dumped it down there and walked off. You know, yeah, I mean, a exactly. helicopter, a helicopter or something would have come get, and got get him. Get and, you know, like, I'll be in the trailer. Yeah, no, no. He's, uh, he's fully part of the operation. And he got out of the car and he's like, walking around he's all jacked up he's trying not to be too crazy because that's the big end where the, all the cameras are so and stuff what? and well the let NH, it out you know man. nhra is just not you know yeah but he he's fucking hey, jigs he, and that's what it turned that's what it boils down to he's fucking walking around pumped up. i was like dude that was amazing he goes hang on a second let me let me i can just now starting to be able to put my legs together now after my let my balls hang out right there i'm like hell yeah like, <laughs> hell like, yeah i was like you should have said that shit on camera man yep. you know and it was uh it was legit. He he fucking he likes it. Now, they do things a little different. You know what I mean? He's got a the ten or twelve foot uh bar that they push the car with with the golf cart. It's carbon fiber. His fucking push bar is carbon fiber, guys. And I'm pretty yeah, I sure I, if I wouldn't that, have been in the golf cart any if I wouldn't have been in the golf cart, I think he would have wadded it up a few times. <laughs> because he drives the golf cart with the and the crew. I mean, he drives it while the crew <laughs> crew pushes it. And he was he was not really paying attention. I'm like, oh, yep, yep, he yep. doesn't need to. Nope, no, nah, he's Troy Collins. He doesn't need to. Hey, if no. they broke it, they probably replaced it. And it, it would have blamed it on you know, it could have blamed it on anybody. It could have blamed it on me, you know. So I'm over there going, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey man, uh, okay. yeah. And he even said he was like, yeah, that's the last thing I fucking need is to wad that fucking thing up right now, huh? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that may not to, be. Good. I'm like reaching over to grab the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but yeah, dude, they check their fuel every round, check their way. I mean, dude, the rules. That's the thing. This NHRA deal, if I end up actually. Who checks their fuel? NHRAs. NHRAs. Uh, why? The, the NH and RA. So. There's no cheating in this how deal. Much, how much boost are they able to run? 41 pounds. Okay. What do they have on the car? To make sure that they they got something that shuts it off at forty one pounds. I mean, what what yeah, kind they, of box do they have on? They the all box? have the hyperactive boost controller that we have. Really, but they have one. But hyperactive makes one that's NHRA only. 
when you put that boost controller, it has a max boost limit of 41 pounds built into the boost controller. Cannot be changed, cannot be adjusted. You, there's nothing you can do. Now, there's something somebody can do. Well, it's tough because they take your car and they find out where everything's at and where it all goes. And at the end of the run, when you get down there, they pull your card out of your race pack. Oh, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so do they like make. They check your data. I find that hard to believe, man. I mean, they. I mean, what if you make 41.1 pounds of boost? So, like, how much boost did this car make? Uh, 41. 40 to 41 pounds is all that, that all you're going to make. You make any more than that, and they're going to come over there. I mean, but what if it, like, hits it? Does it pull it back out, or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it has the max boost limit, so it's going it, to, you know, if it goes up for a second and comes back down, you know what I mean, then they're going to they're gonna make you calm it down early, you know? They're going to come over there in a bunch of gray shirts, four or five of them from the wow. NH&RA, and they're going to say, hey. Hey, see your laptop. we're from the NHNRA. Yeah, listen, we're guys. We're going to check your data. We're from the NHNRA. And they said, Troy, or they said, Steve, we need to look at your race pack. And Steve goes, uh, why? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but what for? Yeah. And uh, they well, they said, well, when we pulled the, the data, you know, we've seen a problem and we want to look at it. And I don't, dude, I don't know if it was boost or RPM or what it was, but, I mean, you're not allowed to have, you're not allowed to go over an RPM limit. You're not allowed to, I mean. Damn. You're not allowed to have the rev limiter on, you know, because they, they don't want you hitting the dots and stuff. Like, you're not allowed to have any of that shit. These these gray shirts, they ain't playing around. You're NH&RA serious. So. Wow. It was wild, man. And the whole time, I'm just trying to stay out of everybody's way. So, what size turbos does this car have on it? The maximum limit. Is what? 98? 91. 91? 88. Yeah, Mod 88, I think, is all you're allowed to have in that class. Shit. I'm not really sure. That's crazy. So I couldn't even run my fucking car in that deal because I'd make too much boost. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like nobody would complain, though. Uh, (laughs) I I feel like no gray shirts from the NHNRA would come over and say anything to me. I don't think that they would get you would pass tech. I don't think they'd even let you. Hell no. I'd oil that thing down. They'd charge me. I'd have to say, well, could you just keep my car? Because I couldn't afford. That's like 40 grand if you oil it down or something crazy. Jesus. Yeah, they don't know. They don't mess around. They do not mess around in that deal. It's serious. And if you're not in staging lanes, they're going to run it. They're going to run it without you. Yep. So, it was wild. I learned a lot. A lot of rules I got to figure out. Doesn't mean I'm going to quit street racing. You know what I mean? Yeah, everybody kept asking me, well, what's Chief doing? What's this big announcement? And pretty much, man, I didn't know. You know, I haven't asked you anything about it. You know, I mean, I know, I mean, Basically, man, it ain't none of my business. You're going to go and do what you want to do. That and, you know, so everybody that asked me, they're like, so what's this big announcement? And I don't, I feel like nobody believed me whenever I told them I didn't know, you know? <laughs> so now I'm, let's, you know, let's be honest. Anyone that knows me or has heard me talk or knows, have known me for any amount of time knows that I want to drag race for a, for a living mm-hmm. for the rest of my that. life. I know that, you know. At least a year I, I, after I knew you. I want to drag race for a living for the rest of my life, period. That's all I want to do. I feel like in order to do that, I'm going to explore every option possible. That's where they drag race. Mm-hmm. That's where people drag race for a living. So I'm going to go check it out. Um, If it's possible that I can fit in and belong in something like that and drag race for a living for the rest of my life, you know, then I'm going to go check it out doesn't mean I'm going to quit doing what I'm doing. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be who I am. It doesn't mean any of that stuff. It just means that, you know, there are places out there where people drag race for a living, and I just want to find out where it all comes from. How do they do it? Where's the money come from? Where how do they get the money? You know, um, and what does it mean to drag race in an organiza- organization like that? You know, what does it mean to drag race for them? You know what I mean? Like, I just wanted to make sure that it was something that uh, was enticing enough to look into. And... Yeah, if you can fit in, then, you know. I'm not sure I can fit in because, you know, my name isn't associated with any of my parents that could put their name on the side of my car or anything. But, like, I don't know. We'll see. You know, I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to say yay or nay to what's what I'm doing. But I hope that the next couple of times I go to the NHNRA races, I'm hoping that one of these times I'm going to breathe to bring my helmet. That's the goal, right? Well, I know that the first time that they're going to let you bring their helmet, 
they're going to let you bring me too. <laughs> I'm going to be fucking standing on the starting line with you. I'm gonna so, be, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. No, you know, I mean, yeah. Everybody's like, well, what do you think about that? You know, and I'm like, well, that's Chief's dream, you know, so I don't, I don't really, it's not that I don't have an opinion about it. It's just, if you're going to fucking race NHRA Pro Mod, then I'm going to be standing behind you as much as I possibly can. I mean, does that fit in with my lifelong goals? I don't know, you know, but I definitely want to be there whenever you fucking race. That's for sure. But yeah, I don't know if I want to race pro mod or, I mean, I know I want to race pro mod, but I don't know if I'm going to race. It doesn't matter what you're racing. You know, eventually, I mean, who knows? Funny car pro, you know what I mean? I'll stand behind you. I don't think I can. I I mean, I'll be like, yeah, whatever. You know, what, what did you (laughs) say? I'll I said I'll stand behind you, even if it's fucking pro stock. I'll be, I'll be going, yeah, whatever. You know, right. hey, I thought those cars were faster than they were too. I was a little surprised. Yeah. When I saw some incrementals, They're I was like, faster than your car. I was like, whoa. But they don't have any nitrous or turbos Which or you, nothing. You would have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, it makes me fucking laugh that anybody it's like watching baseball without steroids. Yeah. It makes me laugh that anybody would. Well, you think you can handle this? Oh, you mean slow down? Oh, yeah, um, well, and people possibly. were people were telling me, you know, you think you could drive one of these cars, and I was like, well, I mean, pff, you know, we had one of those with a five sixty eight and a plate two years ago that ran four fifties, <laughs> you know, like I mean, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I, you know, hey, it is what it is. If that's a stepping stone to get you where you want to be, so be it. But you know, I don't know. I whatever. just want to race for a living, you know. So, so. Whatever that means, funny car would be fucking yeah. It would. Ugh, that'd uh, be the that'd be the that'd be cool. That'd be the bomb dot com right there. I can fit in a funny car. I don't think I can fit in a uh, in a dragster. No, I don't think I can fit in a top field dragster. Yeah, you know, Leah's a lot smaller than me. I don't well, think I don't think I could. Yeah, she is. <laughs> I don't. So is Clay. Yeah, Clay, Clay's a little guy. Clay, he's a, he's a he's a strong medium. Yeah, I don't think he, you know. I just don't think I could fit. No, I'd have to cut one of my legs off. Then it'd still be pretty tough. <laughs> You'd yes. have enough leg room. Yeah, but I wouldn't have any shoulder area. <laughs> no. no. So, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, you know, I got to walk around and get the experience and figure yeah. it all out. And um, who knows? Maybe you'll see me out there racing with the NHNRA pretty quick. I, don't know, I got my license. Yeah? I got an NHNRA license. I don't. I don't have one. It says Pro Mod. Just Does saying. really? I'm just saying. Wow. If there's anybody out there. That's cool. It's looking for a driver. I know a guy. Yep. I know how to stage a turbo car. Yeah. And a nitrous car. And a, I, could, I mean, you know. Blower car is no different than a nitrous car. I don't know. I was I had to pay a lot of attention to blower cars. There's that fuel thing you got. You got to know when to turn the fuel on and all that stuff. And you, I've seen them pedal it and chunk, chunk a belt. Like, Whew. Yeah. You got to be careful. Those blower cars are fucking mean. Yeah. Mean. They're cool, though. Jesus. Yeah, you got the turbo guys in between rounds. This is literally, I I worked on a turbo pro mod team. I can say that, okay? Mm-hmm. A top one. The one that yeah. won the race. Yeah, that, I mean, we won. And the last year's champion. I mean, you can say we. Yeah, last year's champion. I had the shirt on and shit. I, know, I saw know. pictures. It's they yellow. did They did make fun of me because I had to wear gloves. If I, You know, I was like, man, I really would like some gloves. You know, they don't did have any have, fingertips. Did, their gloves don't have fingertips? No, they don't have fingertips. Oh. So they don't have gloves. I'm like, I ain't got no gloves. And they're like, no, what do you need gloves for? And I was like, this shit's hot as fuck. <laughs> He's like, yo, I don't feel. I was like, dude, you don't have Did any they fingertips. Laugh at you? Yeah, of course they laughed at me. I was like, yeah, but like, you've been doing this a long time. You don't have any fingertips. You still need to punch your, a keyboard. You know, every once in a while, I still got, you know, my shit's got to be smooth. Yeah. You know what I mean? But nobody want them rubbing all up on them with some rough shit. No, you know, I don't like that shit. Feeling like Freddy Krueger. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, but I will tell you this in between rounds, damn the other shit. Yeah, just pulling the fucking blowers just, off, pulling just the heads off. Yeah. Damn, changing fucking pistons. Damn, what all those guys have to do. Yeah, the of nitrous work. and and blower guys. Damn that. Yep. We were literally sitting in lawn chairs. Like they said, I get to do the passenger side of the motor in between rounds, and I'm like, oh Which shit. Is what? Change I don't know. Plugs? I don't know what that means. Like I'm thinking, I'm thinking, do we got to fucking pull the head off and shit? Because I'm not cut out for that. I don't want oil all over me. You know. <laughs> so. You're a tuner slash driver. Well, I just left home where, where we got oil everywhere, you yeah. know? So, no, all you got to do is, uh, I, I felt like they were just making me do it so that we looked busy. Because you pull the valve cover off, well, you pull the plugs, set the plugs up there so Petty can look at them, pull the valve covers off, you um, check the lash, mm-hmm. and even if it's close, 
They're okay with it. <laughs> hey, so that's how I do my deal too. That's how I do my deal. And then, uh, then Mikey, uh, the crew guy, he has this uh, apparatus that bolts to the head, and he can check the springs real quick, real quick. Well, most of them. Yeah. <laughs> That one looks good, so he just gets it. I said, so you don't check all those? And he's like, ah, the turbo's kind of in the way. It makes it a pain in the ass. And I was like. But all these other ones are good, so those yeah, probably yeah, are that's what he's, Yes, that's what he's. So, dude, it was. <laughs> that's, how, that's how my programs ran. <laughs> they put the fans everywhere, and you get the data, and I put it on the charger, and psh, sit in a lawn chair. And literally, yeah. Troy Coughlin smokes smokes uh, Cohibas. Like, really? Or what, isn't that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, he smokes those cigars. Yeah, I mean, I dude, like I could I could have fit in with with him. I, we I fit in real fucking well there. We sat in lawn chairs, we smoked cigarettes, we talked about racing and stuff, and Hell yeah, you know, yeah, like it was a, uh, it was legit. Uh, yeah, you know, so the turbo deal is about like normal. You know, it wasn't a lot of maintenance in between rounds. It wasn't a lot of doing anything to the car. It was mainly just checking the tune up and uh, making sure that he was ready to go. You know. That's cool to see that at at their level, it's still that way. Yeah, and it, it I mean, he's got two full time guys, and him, which he doesn't work on the car, you know, much. And you got two full time guys that do. They have their jobs. One does the motor stuff. One does the back. And if anything goes wrong, of course, they both jump in. And then you got Petty, who's a crew chief, and he does all the tuning. You know what I mean? And he does the he picks the back half tune ups and the shocks and all that. So I mean, you know, it's it's a uh it's a fairly easy operation to run when things go right i'm sure when things go wrong oh my god but but when i was there things were going right things were running smooth and um it went down fairly easy so that was that part was cool i can be a part of that you know what i mean but god dang all the blower guys they're stripping blowers and taking stuff apart and raw putting rods and stuff you know i'm like good lord (laughs) that's a lot of work like it's like dang and still like, didn't win they can't even turn the um cars off once they start them up like one guy started his car and the guy next to him broke and like coasted down the track like locked in first gear or something this guy couldn't shut his car off because if he did he'd have to redo everything and i'm like i'm like asking petty i'm like why didn't he shut it i'm asking actually chris bell from connect shock standing there on the starting line and i was like how come he don't shut it off dude what is he doing why is he why don't he shut off he goes, this ain't a goddamn 455 Pontiac with a couple of 88 millimeters off a of Peterbilt. You can't just shut it off and sit back and wait. He's like, I'm like, why not? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't understand. He's like, cause that's a blower deal. You got to run the fuel out of it. You got to clean it all. Take the blower and do things with it. I'm like, what the really? That's insane. Yeah, it's out of control. <clears throat> so, but it was cool. But now I'm back. Um, I've. I've went and seen how the other side lives their life, and uh, who knows if I'll ever get to be a part of it. But for now, I'm uh, you know I'm gonna start putting together a, a Craigslist ad, you know, looking for a job behind the wheel of a an H and R A car. I got my last sure Craigslist license. Is a good spot for that. Craigslist is probably a good. Spot. That's a good spot for anything. You know what I mean? Everything I look for, I start with Craigslist. So yep. put me a little you know for hire ad up. Mm-hmm. It's, it's sending pictures of my helmet. Yeah, Look, and your, and got your NHNRA helmet, license. Got me an NHNRA license, and uh, I'm good to go. I don't have a driver's license, so I can't drive the rig or nothing. But. All right. You don't, need, you don't <laughs> want that job. No, I don't want to drive anything. Somebody, like else, that. somebody else has that job. <laughs> now I can fly. Like You can yeah. fly me somewhere, yep. you know, get me a car. Um. So we're now I'm back. Now we're right back to Street Outlaws, right? Street now we're right back Outlaws. to filming the show and street racing and doing all that. So we'll see see what happens there was a lot of fans out there that were concerned that this meant i'm done you know like oh i saw a couple spots that you were done you're done you're quitting the show yeah Uh, that's what they were telling me. no more podcast well that Uh, was no more podcast is probably true i mean god damn we barely get in here to do them anyway yeah but we're in here now damn it we're back to our roots back to our tens of listeners exactly (laughs) we've lost the rest of them um what else phantom what else should we talk about, Phantom? Uh, maybe last night's yeah, yeah, yeah. What was on the show last night? Uh, I lost a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what'd you think? Okay, so 
Now that we're over the all that. Of the crow mod was last yeah, night. what did you think about the show last night? I thought it was pretty good. I mean. Seems yeah. like I really put that car together in a hurry. You did. You did. And yeah. it really looked like that was the first time I had ever seen it. It was the reveal <laughs> of the Chromad. I was so surprised when you dropped you that You were door. surprised. You I were, didn't know what was going to be on there. No, you were, you, were, um, you were surprised. The part that I like is when we're in the office and we're looking at it and we're talking about maybe going to look at it and buy it mm-hmm. and all that, and there's a DVD in the desk that has the car on the cover yes. in white the, already. The Lights Out 7. Yeah, from Lights Out 7. So, like... <laughs> It's like one of those moments where it's like, are they really just now finding this car? You yeah, know? yeah. And then when you drop, when we drop the trailer, bring it out of the trailer, it's already got the the lights out seven sticker from Radio versus the World yeah. still and on you the said, window. I just gotta get a motor and a tranny, and you can clearly see there's a Rossler. There's a, sitting there's in a Rossler tranny already in it. Yeah, yeah, you know, hey. I felt like you know, there's a few times that we have to act. We did a good job. It, well, def- yeah, we acted. Yeah. Yeah, we acted. We acted. We um, acted like we ain't never seen we, it before. <laughs> we acted like I just went and picked it up. Yeah. You, you made still, a circle was, around the parking lot. There was rubber. There was rubber on the fucking quarter panel. I know, you know what I mean? I like, know. what do you mean? It's, like, it's brand new. Just brought it home from the wrap shop. Were they wrapped in the rubber? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah. Oh well. Hey. Oh well. That's yeah. what happens whenever the TV crew isn't here when we go and do stuff. Yes. So like when I went and bought that car and had it wrapped, nobody was around. They didn't get to film it. So now we got to redo it so that the you know the fans and the people at home can see us in our natural habitat. Mm-hmm. That's true. There, that, that's true. There's a lot of people that that asked me this weekend. So did you get another car? A lot of people asked me. You're gonna hey, get so another car? Did you get the crow fixed yet? And I was like, um, th- uh, no. I mean, that's that's not gonna happen. So. Yeah, where you been under a rock? Yeah. Well, how's how's this car coming? You know, and I was like, oh man, the crow mod. You know, and I'd start telling them, and they'd be like, what? Oh, you you mean the crow? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, no, there's no fixing that. That car's done. Yes. But the diecast cars, you the can get those. Cool, diecast cars aren't done. We're still making these deals. Yeah. So it, it really sucked watching myself lose. Three times. You lost a bunch last night, Sean. I lost twice I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and then won one. But I'm going to give it man, to you straight. You know what? They didn't even say anything about me saying that the motor was hurt. The only way that anybody said anything about the motor being hurt was you. Yeah. I'm, so, yeah. Yep. We'll leave it to your best friend to let I him mean, know the real story, right? Man, there was a lot of smoke at the line. Holy moly, that thing was hurt. Yeah. God, what I a, seriously thought, man. What a junker. Dave, that fucking nitrous motor ain't going to make it much longer. Yeah, it wasn't you. It wasn't Dave. <laughs> but. We did pull the motor apart after that pass, and uh, it had a fucked up piston and ring in it. So, you know, it's part of it. Racing hard. Hard racing. Yeah. It had, you know, a couple hundred passes on it. I can't believe my little diecast car has the Hoosier on the rear it tire. Does. I mean, it's got slicks, big tires. Small, I mean, yeah. It's like the full, it's a, it's a little crow. It is. It's a it's little really crow. Cool. I know the, the. The window stickers even say uh, Outlaw 10.5, 469. Like, I mean, it's a little crow. It's a little crow. It's pretty cool. A little huh. crow. Yeah, the legacy lives on in the little crow. Steady losing, man. Yeah, you lost a lot. I did. Number three. But you beat Dave. I lost a lot, and I'm still at three. You beat Dave. And it's weird yeah. how Monza and Doc can win and look stupid, and you lost and looked cool. Yeah, that's because I'm cool. When you told Dave, yep, I'll race you, and then you said, I'm not going to block the list ever. That's not, I don't block the list. Yeah, we knew the car was hurt. You race anyway. I mean, what they didn't show was they wasn't going to try to race me that night. They just wanted to call me out. I just think it's cool. So I think it's cool that you're a hard ass and you I was like, sure. you're going to race. Yeah, call me out, man. You know, and they called me out, and I said, okay, give me about 15 minutes. <laughs> We'll race tonight. I'll leave here fucking eight, you know, or broke car, crash car, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I feel like they, uh, they fucked that deal up. So, oh, well, though. It seemed like as soon as I let off the brake, though, the smoke quit. Yeah. That's what it looked like. Air filled the cylinders, yeah. Huh. That's pretty crazy. Hmm. <laughs> There was a lot of smoke. It's throwing oil everywhere. 
they never got it a chance to fucking say anything about, yeah, I smoked the fucking tires because I oiled my lane down whenever I was racing Monza. <laughs> During the burnout, it blew so much oil everywhere. Remember, we had to take a break. Yeah. Like, we backed up and had to do burnouts again because it took so long. There's so, oil there's there. oil everywhere. And remember, we had to pull the front end off the car and wipe all the oil off of everything. So I raced Monza, and then right after that, I still raced Dave. Yeah, because you're awesome. Because you're my best friend. Well, it was it was pretty stupid. But I probably man, I didn't think it was stupid. You won. You beat I Dave. Probably wouldn't have raced Dave, but you was like, man, fuck that. You're gonna race him. And I was like, fuck yeah, we are. <laughs> well, yeah, because well, at this point, Kentucky was like, man, let's just put no. the car up. I remember you guys and, were like, fuck this. We ain't racing them tonight. We've raced too much tonight. The cars hurt. We don't yeah, want to get. We actually raced Doc twice. And I was like, what is the point of leaving here three or four? What's the difference? Yeah. And as like, soon as you said that, I was, fuck. If you're not number right. one, I mean, if you're not number one, <laughs> if you're not number one, what's the difference in number three or number four? There wasn't. There was no difference. But if you beat Dave, now yes. that's cool. Yes. That's something cool, right? Or if you fucking lose with a hurt car, everybody expected you to anyway. I mean, what's the difference? Fuck that. Who cares? If you're not number one, who gives a shit? Race yep. until you race. Yep. You know? You race until you race. Race. That's right, baby. <laughs> Race until you race. That's right, baby. <laughs> you don't score until you score. That's right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the fuck I mean? <laughs> oh, no, I know. It just reminded me, just reminded me of that. And what's crazy is fucking we race we're you can't the, race no more. We we're, you know? we're sitting in the motel this weekend in American Pie. Was Panda. On, and I told Aiden, Panda, Panda. You gotta watch this. This is a killer show. And Aaron just looks at me. Yeah, she's like, it's not this really for really it's not for really kids. for Aiden. And then he goes, "You don't score until you score." And Stifler goes, "That's right, baby." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a couple minutes later, I realized it wasn't for kids. Yeah, it's not really for kids. So, really, so we went in and changed it. Not really. I told Aaron it's on TV. Come to find out, it was on HBO. Yeah, that's not really so, TV. That's not really TV. We went ahead and turned it. Oh, you changed it? I changed it. Ah, after a little bit. Well, man, I tell you. I left the NHNRA as a winner mm -hmm. in my yellow shirt. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like it was a good experience. And I'm driving to the airport. And I realize that I have changed in some way, shape, or form. I've changed drag racing. I really have. Like, what the fuck? Me? Somehow, I have actually made an impact on drag racing in every facet, in every, everything. Mm -hmm. The the whole thing. Like, that's, that's insane. Street racing. Yeah. Because of street racing, I have been able to impact drivers and crew chiefs and crewmen and team owners and sanctioning bodies and presidents and vice presidents and people with their own plane. Like mm -hmm. I've been able to impact those people in some way, shape or form, whether it's negative or positive still yet. I have changed drag racing in some way. You know what I mean? That's just, dude, that started out as negative and it might end negative. You know, you like I told them, Hey, you think you want me to be a part of your little club here till you actually find out what I'm like? You know what I mean? You, you might be biting off a little bit here. I'm, you know, yeah. this may not be for me, you know, I don't know. Or, the, or I may not be for y'all, you know, <laughs> something, but, but I've, dude, you look on fucking Facebook and you look on, you know, in like the TV shows and stuff. I mean, there I was at the NHNRA, you know, rubbing elbows with rich people. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, uh, they're going to let you in their club and, there's two things that's going to happen. You're going to run their club or they're going to kick you out of their club. <laughs> that's what, that's the two things. That's the only two, 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 yeah. two ending results, which means I'm getting kicked out. No, they're not. No, no they're not going to let me run too much on that deal. They got that deal sewed up, uh, but they are changing their ways. The NHRA, no one said that they'd ever change. No one said they'd ever look at this. And, you know, they always, everybody always says the NHRA sucks, can't figure it out, can't get their head out of their ass. But hey, they paid for me to come out to the race, to get to be a part of it. And then they gave me credentials to go anywhere the fuck I wanted. And they let me like 
mixed fuel on one of Don Schumacher's top fuel cars. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, that's a that's just kind of a big deal here. That's a long way from them getting mad at Clay Milliken for us being in his pits. That's a long way from them taking my license that I've never had. Yeah. A long way from them sending me a shitty letter and going, we know you ain't never had a license, but, <laughs> but if you did. buddies who did, but if you did, them. If you did have a license, we'd take it. And just for that, we're going to take all your friends' licenses, <laughs> yep. you know. Yeah, because like, they took mine. Yeah. They showed the fuck took it. <laughs> Here's what's fucked up is y'all had licenses and they took all y'all's. I ain't never had a license. They gave me one. Yeah. They still ain't gave y'all's back. Uh-uh. Fuck. No. Would you be willing to have a license if they gave you one? Um. What was that? Somebody just spooled, somebody up just a spooled car. something up. Is that what that was? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. It sounded like it came from the parking lot. No, I think it came from out back. It sounded like an NH and RA Pro mod. Might I know what Jeff. they sound like. I've worked on one of those teams. Before. Might be Jeff wondering why his car's sitting out. I used to work for an NH and Pro Mod team. I know. You know I was on one. I know. I know what they sound like. What were we talking about? Where somebody spooled up? Uh, oh yeah, would you would you ever would you ever try and get a license? Would you ask oh. them for a license back if you? you know? Um, I had one before. Yeah, so it, it's iffy right now. They they put a bad taste in your mouth, and well, it's iffy, right? Well, it's not even really that. It's what, what do I need one for? There you go. It's because you're street. No, no, no. That you are. That ain't got no, nothing to I, do with it. I hear you. Whatever. I hear you. Whatever. My buddy's street. Hey, I had one yes. before, and I never even fucking showed it to anybody. Yeah, because you're embarrassed. Because so, yeah. <laughs> you're like, I don't know. No, it hasn't kept me from doing man. anything that I want to do. I did see a Murder Nova shirt in the stands, yeah. and it was uh, it was pretty neat. That's cool. Yeah, it was a big shirt. Hell yeah. It was, it was a fan of mine. It was he a, was probably it was between a, 40 and 50, and he probably worked on his own cars. About 280. <laughs> yeah, about 280. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Hey, that's my demo. Yeah, he was rocking it. Yeah. He was rocking it. There's probably um, some big chief shirts out there. You just They're hard to see on 12, 13-year-old girls. So, <laughs> especially when they got like the... You know the, the they're cut they're cut stuff. into a tank top. Yeah, you know, exactly. They got the bottom rolled up into a yeah. knot. So you can see their belly button f- ring. Pigtails fucking covering up their backs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> dick, what a <laughs> dick! Fuck off, man. Um, but yeah, I was driving back and I realized two things. I realized one thing that I've changed the face of drag racing. I realized that. And the other thing that I realized is that New Jersey is really close to New York. It is. I did not know that. It is. It's I saw like just the right across the river, right? I or saw right across the, the fucking. I don't know. Whatever they call that moat. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the fucking Empire State Building from the car on yeah. the way to the airport, and I fucking lost my shit. And I was like, "What the fuck? That's the that's the Empire State Building. This is. I mean, we're talking New York. Everything's yeah. in New York, right? Mm-hmm. The chick, you know? Yeah." The chicks in New Talking York. About the big chick. Yeah, the big chick. Your big yeah, green chick. The big, the big, the big copper chick. <laughs> green. She's green. <laughs> the big green chicks there. France gave her yeah. gave us that deal, She's right? Still fucking hanging out there. Oh yeah, waving like a mad person out yeah. waving like Forrest Gump out there. She went up to the top. I thought about it. That would have been cool. I thought about it. It was really tough to check in the rental car and go to the, go inside the airport and leave on an airplane for Oklahoma when I could have driven right across the moat there. Or <laughs> maybe it's the East River. You know, like Run DMC talked about? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but I could have driven right over there and seen all of the New York stuff. Central Park, The Chick, Staten Island. Yeah. You know, like, New York has a lot of cool stuff. The Empire State Building is I've, there. I've seen I've seen the Statue of Liberty, but it was a long ways away. But, I and I wanted to drive there, but, whew, I didn't. I almost did. You should have. I almost yeah. did, we man. We should go race there. We're trying. We can't find any roads up there. They don't street race up there anymore. I almost did, though. I looked at that fucking... All the way up to the point where I was getting on my plane, I thought, fuck it. I'm... Fuck it. I'm going. I'm just going to New York for the evening, for the night. That's what you should have done. And I'm going to party my fucking ass off. And then I'll come back and just be like, you know, me, I missed my flight. They yep. didn't have another flight till Wednesday. <laughs> Ain't that some bullshit? <laughs> so I just... No, I just stayed at the airport. Didn't do anything. Yep. Stayed in. Slept right there. It was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah, fucking sucks. Fucking terrible. Then you have all these pictures. And then all the pictures that surface on Instagram are chief party up at yep. the fucking at the fucking Statue of Liberty. The big green chick. I mean, Central Park is there. I know. I'm going back. Oh. 
Plus, yeah, I could find I could find the the coffee shop that friends hung Central out Park. in Central Park. I could find that. Yep. You yep. know, maybe go hang out with Ross and Rachel. Maybe Phoebe's in there singing. You yeah. know, smelly cat. cat I mean, dude, I want to go to New York, so I'm planning a trip to New York. Let's uh, go. Yeah, I'm going. My new enclosed trailer is supposed to be ready this week. What does that mean? You're gonna take me in your enclosed? Yeah, that means we're gonna make. I'm a taking trip a plane to New York. Oh. I ain't driving in New York. Dri- I thought we was going to drive. What the and fuck would we drive for? So that we could go do whatever we want to do and, and race our cars and stuff. Where are you going to race? There ain't nowhere to race up there, well, man. You're going to find us a race somewhere. Okay. You you race. I'll negotiate the race. I'm going to get me a rental. Actually, I'm not even going to have a car. I'm just going to drop me off downtown. <laughs> you don't need a car for nope. downtown. I'm going to drop me off downtown. I'm going to do the whole th- I'm going to look at all the pigeons like Home Alone and everything. Like I'm going to do the whole thing. Home Alone too. Yep, I even got a pair of Adidas. They're New York, New York special edition Adidas that have the uh, the chick on the back of them. Yeah. Yep. I know, and I could have worn them in this weekend in New York, and I didn't because I bitched out. Damn. Oh, I can't believe I was that close. I know. Whatever. Fuck it. I party again later. Uh, but I had to come back here to you guys to my friends. Yeah. My friends, my shop, my friends, my race cars here. NH and RA is not here. We got to film some TV stuff and do a podcast. This is why I did all this for you guys, for the podcast listeners. Because it's Tuesday. Because it's Tuesday, and this is what you we do on Tuesday. You not come home on Tuesday. There was no way I was going to miss no. a podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to go back and work on my car and f- find out who's back there spooling stuff up. I got a lot to do to my car. You got a lot to do. Check us out. Uh, we're going to start doing these podcasts every Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, we're going to. We're going to. And if you're lucky, we may do a midweek special. <laughs> Isn't that what he said last time? We're going to try to get in here Thursday or Friday. Yeah, you know, another get, one. we might. Hey, we might, too. This deal's kind of taking off. It is. <laughs> this this is podcast, listeners out there. podcast thing's happy. growing. I think uh, I think we should start doing this on a weekly basis, so we're going to try and get in here every Tuesday. Yep. Check us out. Keep it locked right here on uh, on your Tuesday podcast station. That's right. Whatever. The Chief and Sean show. That's right, baby. That's right, baby. Hey, you don't you don't score it till you 